in the motion of flag system, the phase when the ball is in the flight in the air, that's described by the equations we've derived in the past, but there's a phase where the ball hits the ground, and that's the phase which is discontinuous, right? The velocity is that way before it hits the, ball, the ground, it's downwards, but it reverses and comes upwards, and those, the, the equations which describe that particular, is, this, this particular uh, motion is described by, if you've, you've probably heard of this before, the coefficient of restitution, which was a model created by Newton again. So uh, that's one system we'll talk about. Other system is a pogo stick, uh, pogo stick hopper, a spring mass hopper, okay? So a hybrid system has has multiple phases in its motion. These phases are described by different equations. So clearly, if you, if you walk and then you swim, then that is also a hybrid uh, system because now you have equations which describe motion on the ground and then motion which is swimming. So that's uh, another example. But here, we're going to talk about two systems which are easy to model uh, relatively. Two systems. One is a bouncing ball. And two is a pogo stick or a spring mass hopper or a hopping robot. Okay, let's first talk about bouncing ball. Okay, I'm going to uh, show you something, but you have probably done this in your uh, project. You've already looked at a system which bounces, right? You've modeled the system, you've done some simulations. I'm just going to formalize it with uh, with gravity. You do not have gravity in your um, in your project, right? So this is the bouncing ball example. You take a ball and you launch it with a speed. Let's say it's large in the word in the horizontal direction, but doesn't have to be horizontal. Can be vertical as well as horizontal at an angle. Then the ball. Uh, let me draw the ground. So when the ball is launched that that way. It will follow parabolic profile. Hit the ground, bounce back up to a new height which is less than the original height and then bounce okay so what our goal is to model the system and then of course do a simulation for the system so the one way of describing the system is there's a flight phase, okay? So it's flying in the air. Some point of time it hits the ground, so we need to detect, detect ground. The moment we detect the ground, we need to apply a condition which determines what happens to the ball after it collides with the ground. So that's the bounce phase. It's called this flight phase, bounce phase. And then it flies off in the air. And then there's a flight phase. Bounce phase and so on. Okay, we have to detect contact. 
Okay, so as I said, our goal is to simulate this system and it'll probably, well, it'll probably take 10 bounces before it really becomes, uh, before it stops, the speed is close to zero, but it really doesn't make sense for us to uh, write a code which integrates equations of motion and then there's a bounce and just keep writing that, how many times are we going to do that? So instead of doing that, writing equations for these phases using Remember, we use OD45 to do this in MATLAB. What we'll do is we'll try the simplest building block, which makes up the system, and then just repeat it. So the, the building block, I would like to think, is just this piece. Okay, This constitutes one single unit, which if I repeat again and again, I'll be able to simulate repeated motion. So this is the repeating element. So the goal is model this system for one building unit and then loop. So we just keep doing that for every step. We just keep repeating that and then we'll be able to simulate from bouncing motion. Okay, so uh, let's build the model. This is uh, fairly straightforward for this particular uh, example because we've seen in our first course in dynamics how to model equations of motion of a ball falling under gravity. In fact, we did it last time. So I'm going to write the equations of motion. The first step is equations of motion. the flight phase, okay? Uh, I'm not, well, if you want, you can derive it using Euler, Lagrange, or Newton's laws. It's essentially the acceleration in the y direction is minus g, and the acceleration in the x direction is zero. Okay, then we have to detect contact Okay, in this case, the contact happens when y equals zero, right? This is our x and y. So we need to detect when the contact happens, which happens at y equals zero. So we keep integrating the equations till y equals zero. We stop integration. And then you apply the bounce phase equation, which is which comes from Newton's law of restitution. Okay, uh, Newton's laws of restitution states that when a ball comes with a velocity v y downward, so the ball would have two velocities x and y. The y velocity is downwards. Then, and the notation I like to use is I I like to call v y negative as the velocity p4 collision and vy positive y positive is the velocity after collision vy positive vy negative are are the velocities in the y direction before and after collision. Sorry, after and before collision. After and before collision respectively. So the model is 
the velocity in the y direction after collision is negative e times velocity of y before collision where uh, it's really I should just put this arrow because uh, we do not know the direction of velocity in the y direction but it's going to be negative of that so if we start off with a negative y which is downwards we apply this equation we get a positive velocity which is upwards e is a constant called the coefficient of restitution It's a constant for the surface, for the particular ball ground uh, model, so ball ground combination. Okay, so a uh, tennis ball falling on concrete would have different E from a tennis ball falling on carpet, or a tennis ball uh, falling on concrete would have a different E from uh, a different kind of a ping pong ball falling on concrete. So that really depends on the pair. Uh, e is always less than 1, right? It has to? What do you think? This is plastic collision. This is the elastic collision. Okay, yeah. So e has to be um, e has to be between zero and one. Uh, zero is when when you put zero, you get v y equals zero, which means the ball sticks to the ground. It won't have a velocity upwards. If you put equals one, then the velocity after impact will be exactly equal and opposite to the velocity before impact. If you have e greater than one. What it means? It means that if the ball is falling with certain velocity, it's going to bounce off harder than it came, and that really violates the conservation of energy, which is the energy output energy is going to be greater than the input energy. Energy is half mv square, uh, and that really violates unless, of course, uh, there is something inside the ball which accelerates it. So uh, uh, I know of a situation where this is. Wasn't there a movie? There's a movie. Yeah, yeah. The, they, they made a whole they made a whole movie out of the idea that e can be greater than one. That movie is Flubber. Yeah, Flubber. Yeah. Yeah. I actually asked this question and I show the the a video of that movie. But yeah, so uh, there is a whole movie where they have e greater than one, and uh, that's clearly not possible. So it's possible, but not in real life. Okay, so this is the What we have done is we've described in one page all the equations which we need in MATLAB to simulate the ball bouncing. Uh, a few details about simulation. So we need to model, eventually we want to put this in MATLAB, right? everything in MATLAB. And some of these things we've done, we've done a modeling of a flight phase or, or the phase when it's in there. So let, let me write the part in MATLAB here quickly and then show you how to do it in MATLAB. One thing which I have not discussed so far is I've shown you how to do flight phase. I've not shown you how to detect contact. So what's going on is you're integrating. So given a launch speed, let's say you launch the ball this way, right? As you, uh, as the ball goes forward in time, ODE 4, 5, which is the integrator, will tell you what happens to the ball x, y, right? But some point of time, it's going to hit the ground, and you want to stop the integration there, right? And you do not know ahead of time at what time you will contact the ground. Okay, so when you integrate, you integrate from zero to whatever ten seconds. But in ten seconds, it would have well have been beneath the ground. So there is a way in which you can tell MATLAB to stop integration when you hit a particular uh, instant. In this case, y equals zero is the instant which you want integration to stop. So I'll I'll explain to you how that is done, and then we'll get get to simulation. So this is implementation in MATLAB.
okay the heart of this is in the flight phase is to put is to call uh, ODE45 so T Q equals ODE45 which we have seen in the past we describe the equations of the ball in a function I just called it ball RHS I'll describe what that is uh, we go from the start to an end for the time we have to give an initial conditions how do you launch the ball we have some options and this is these are going to be critical I'm going to describe the options in a bit and then parameters Okay, so let me write the various things. This is function which has x dot x double dot equals zero and y dot double dot equals minus g. Start and end time. This is the initial condition, the initial launch. So you, this will have x0 y0 the position at which the ball is launched the velocity with which the ball is launched okay those four conditions four uh, parameters could be uh, gravity in this case is the only parameter which seems to be important and then the options okay so if you use this function it will keep integrating and it will keep integrating till T n, which is the end time. However, you want to tell the optimal uh, the integrator to stop when y equals zero. So that is taken care in options. So the options is kind of important here. Uh, options is where you specify things like how how well you want the integration tolerances to be met. So what I do is typically I put so let me give you an example of how tolerances are set. ODE set is the function which is called to set tolerances. There's something called absolute tolerance, which you could set to 1 e raised to negative 8, which means that it will ensure that your uh, integration is accurate to the 8th order, 8 decimal places. And then I'm going to put this function called events, which is the new one here, Not have not talked about it before. Let's call this ball contact. At ball out of space. Okay, let's see how the ball contact. So ball contact is a function. You can call it anything you like, but it has to be called in this sequence. Uh, so I'm going to define ball contact now. Function. Okay, it has. It always would have three outputs. G stop is terminal, and you can call. You can give whatever names you want for these outputs just that it has to have three outputs ball contact the inputs are t and q and the parameters Okay, T, Q parameters. Okay, the function would have, as I said, you need to have three outputs. So the G stop, right, when you have outputs, you have to uh, pass them back. G stop would be 
the y value what is the y value the y value is q3 uh, let me in the better way let's call the y value as q3 this is the so the way i've written my matlab file is the third the third element of q is y okay q has x x dot y y dot third element is y so then g stop equals y is terminal equals uh, minus 1 i'll tell you y is minus 1 and direction sorry is terminal is 1 and direction is minus 1 okay so what this function does is it helps you to it helps it tells uh, ode 4 5 that you got to stop integration when g stop is y so when y equals 0 stop integration no g stop equals 0 so detect this just tells it detect detect g stop equal to y equal to 0 so whenever it finds g stop equal to 0 it detect that if you wanted to make the collision at y was 1 and not 0 then you specify this to be will be y minus 1 so y minus 1 equals g stop if you want to detect y equals 1 so you to stop integration y equals 1 you put y minus 1 instead of putting y equals 0 so it will detect that now what you do is once you detect is terminal tells you to one tells you that you need to stop integration stop integration okay you have two things you can do you can just continue integrating you might just want to detect that the ball hit the ground but not uh stop the integration so what if the surface was water say and in that case you want to hit the ground but you don't may not want to stop integration you want to continue integration so you, in that case you'll put a zero if you put one you stop integration and the one here indicates the direction which you want to detect uh the ground so in this case i've detected detect ground when y goes g stop goes from positive to negative so above the ground y is positive below the ground y is negative and the change in y is going to be from positive to negative and so you're telling it to detect a contact g stop only when the direction is this way so what will happen is if you threw the ball up and you want to detect the collision the ceiling y is going y is not going to be uh, decreasing it will be increasing in which case it will not detect that contact because this is only set to detect collision that way now if you want to detect collision with the ground as well as the ceiling then you'll put direction equals 0 in which case take both if you only want to detect the contact with the ceiling it's y is increasing you put one so that is the meaning of direction so in this case i've set it up so that it will detect the ground when it's going downwards and it'll stop integration so the bounce phase is precisely in here this is sorry this is the detect contact which we talked about 
it's embedded inside the integration. Okay, so now let's put all this together. Uh, the last phase is just uh, changing the switching the velocities from positive to negative. That is fairly straightforward. I'm, I'm going to uh, write that down. So let me run the simulation first and then tell you a little bit about the MATLAB code. This is a ball bouncing now. You need to adjust the pause you have for it to look realistic. You can also do slow-mo by increasing the uh, frames, the number of uh, balls you draw between successive bounces. Uh, here. I have about, I believe, three files. Let's see. Yeah, I just have uh, four files. And I believe they are fairly self explanatory. So, ball animation will do the animation. Ball contact is the file I wrote down, which does detection with the ground. And then ball main is the main file. And then ball RHS is the right hand side animation. Let me open all of them. So really quickly, this is the main file. As I told you, I want to, I would like to define all variables inside ball, uh, like a structure so that it's easy to pass it. In this case, I defined coefficient of restitution to be 0.9, which means the energy would be lost. And then I do have a uh, uh, thing drag force, but I put that set that equal to zero. So as I said, there are five init four initial conditions, the position x0, the velocity x0 dot. So in this case, uh, I'm launching the ball from a height of five. So height of five with a speed in the x direction of one meters per second, the y velocity is zero. That's my Q start. I want to simulate for five seconds. And then, uh, as I said, there's a repeating unit. You need to repeat all of, keep repeating it. So basically it's a while loop which starts and finishes for five, when it runs for five seconds. OD45 and the ball RHS, this is the one which simulates the flight phase. And then what I need to do is, as I said, options would tell me when to stop. So that's ball contact. Ball contact is just exactly what I've described to you. It has those three things, G stop, direction, and is terminal. And then a ball RHS has the X, Y, the position, velocity, and so on. It's outputting the acceleration, or DQ, DT. There's nothing new there. And then, and the last thing is, all I need to do is, once the ground is detected, I need to switch the velocity. So the velocity in the y direction is given by the fourth variable of q start. So I detect the ground contact, I apply the correction restriction. What happens is, because of that, my new velocity would be negative of uh, the initial velocity in the y direction. No other initial condition changes. If you, if with this code, if you wanted to simulate contact with not not y equals zero, but y equals 0 0.5, it's your one, then you should be able to do it too. So here is, so change, see that this changed to one. And then if you wanted to change the speed slightly to not have just the x speed, now I've launched the ball at a at an angle. So you can see that the velocity, the x velocity, the y velocity. Okay, so let's launch this. I forgot to change from 1 to 0. Okay. So you see, it did not detect that. It did not, it detected that, but it didn't stop integration. Well, it, sorry, it did not detect it because I did not tell it. If I said direction, there are two things, right? Direction as well as stop. So I said only detect when you're having uh, a collision with the ground and not with the ceiling. That's like the ceiling. 
Uh, say that again. If you go to the code, yeah. Why do you need to comment out the first? Oh, that it just ignores it. Overrides that line. If you don't comment out this line, first line, it just overrides that. Fine. It takes the last one, so it doesn't oh, really okay. matter. Yeah, it just ignores that. Well, it'll it'll first assign those values, but then rewrite them to those. So is that last piece? Yeah, well, yeah, it just follows line by line. It'll rewrite it. So if you wanted to do this right, then I would just change this back to <coughs> so that it looks realistic. So you probably did a little bit of this, the coefficient restriction in your uh, uh, in your project, right? You put, oh, there it's just a kink because of the animation here, right? It's, that kink is because uh, I had a point in my simulation. It's basically taking points and drawing lines, right? So because I do interpolation, it did not the interpolation didn't choose that point uh, just to make the animation look realistic. Now, if I had that point, then um, it would be much slower. I mean, I could have more points. I mean, that'll go away if I change this. Resolution. The resolution, yeah. Uh, this will this will make it go away, but it's slower. So I've increased the frames per second. There's another kink there. Then that one looks right. Yeah, just the resolution, but it is detecting contact just where it has to. So here's a model for the robot. It's basically a point mass, mass M, a spring leg, so compression spring, And then this is just an abstraction of a physical robot. So you build a robot and you make an abstraction of it, you model it. Uh, you cannot model a, well, you can model a robot in fair details, but some many times uh, approximations of the robot are good enough. So in this case, this is an approximation. So when you actually build a robot, the leg would have mass. In this case, we assume that the leg doesn't have a mass, just a spring with no mass. Theta. So. The goal here is think of this like a model of somebody hopping, okay? And the leg is a spring, is a mass there, and then you can, uh, uh, because there's a spring, you store energy and release the energy passively, but you can control where you land your leg, okay? And so if you get it all right, then this thing has the capacity to just hop its way along. Okay, so the as previous to the bouncing phase and the flight phase for a, uh, for a bouncy ball, uh, this also has phases of motion, essentially the same as before. Okay. In this case, there's a flight, and then stance. Of course, we need to detect contact, and then flight, and so on. <coughs> now here, the flight phase is just like gravity. The, the same model will be true. The contact is a bit more, well, the contact is similar. You detect contact when y equals zero, but the stance phase is a little bit more complicated. It's not just the E. You have to basically model the spring effect, right? So that's the uh, the, the part which is slightly different here. Uh, the way we try to do this is again, we find the basing repeating unit and then keep repeating that. So this is the repeating unit. 
one step. So it takes, if you can simulate one step, then you can just keep repeating that to, to this. Uh, what, what we'll do, however, is, and this is how people do the simulations, is uh, instead of starting, starting just as you take off from the ground and then doing full flight phase and then stance, uh, the way we do it is we model it slightly differently. We start with this model in the, at the apex. Okay, so it's in flight in the apex. Okay, then it makes contact with the ground and then moves due to the spring effect and then it takes off and it's back to the apex. So apex, apex, uh, bounce or stance. So here the velocity is x dot, the height is y, and of course since it's at the apex, y dot equals zero, right? There's no velocity in the y direction because you're starting from the apex. So what we'll do is instead of for for to figure out the repeating unit, we'll do it this way. We start at the apex. We have the flight, detect ground, we have the stance or bounce. Then we have a flight. We call this the takeoff. The takeoff takes place when the spring is fully unstretched. So it starts off unstretched, it compresses, and then goes up, and then it becomes uh, uh, unstretched again. And then flight, and then apex. So this is our repeating unit. We can keep repeating this. <coughs> to generate uh, multiple steps. <coughs> so this is y dot equals zero. Here y equals zero. The takeoff is when uh, the length of the leg is the free length and the apex is y dot equals zero. <coughs> so the equations of motion. Flight or x double dot equals <clears throat> so it's almost like a ball falling under gravity because the spring is doing nothing during the flight phase. The bounce phase so this is a free word diagram. So here we'll have to uh, draw a free ball diagram for the ball in contact or the mass in contact with the ground. Mg is downwards. Because uh, the 
is a spring and that's contacts the ground the spring is going to apply a force equal to k times the extension in the spring so k times could tell a little later so that's that's about the forces there's mg and there's the spring force which is because the spring is in contact with the ground so again x so delta l is the original length minus this length here l okay so if the coordinates of this point are x comma y then l is x square plus y square because that's the this is assumed to be 0 comma 0 Okay, and if this is the angle theta, then we can see that sine theta equals x divided by x squared plus y squared cosine theta equals y divided by squared plus y squared. The sine theta is not bad it's going to be negative because my coordinate axes are like this x y so this distance is negative x so this should be negative okay so i still have to write the equations the equations for the system Okay, so in the x direction, <coughs> the only force acting in the x direction is the component of k delta in the x direction. So equals okay, so minus k. Delta L is L0 minus x square plus y square times sine theta, which is x divided by x square plus y square. Okay, that's my equation one. My second equation comes from uh, the y direction. So, my double dot equals minus mg because gravity is downwards. And k delta L, component of k delta L in the upward direction is positive. So plus k delta L times cosine of theta. That's L0 minus x square plus y square times y divided by x square plus y square. It's a bit complicated. This is not the same as uh, the restitution equation. It was very simple. You just have to write uh, velocity in the y direction. So the equations are the simulation is very similar. Uh, what you do is instead of for the projectile motion, it was the 
what's the time? It's 11 to okay. Uh, for the projectile machine, it was flight phase and the ground, which was just reversing the velocity. In this case, it's a differential equation, so you'll have the same complications. You'll have to, uh, like the OD, you'll have to write a right hand side file which integrates this. And then this one goes on till the length of the spring becomes back to L0 when it's fully unstretched, and that's when you go to the next phase. So uh, I'm going to show you code. So essentially, what you'll do is in the, in the code, there is something called root finder, set it equal to zero, and run the code. Okay. So this is just taking the system in MATLAB and then just simulating the system, and we'll see what if, what we get. Okay, so root finder on, I put that equal to zero. Hopper has a bunch of parameters. I assume gravity V10 doesn't affect things too much. There's a spring constant, which is 100. And then <coughs> what I'm doing here is I'm going to fix the angle at which it lands at uh, 10 degrees, which I convert to radians. So it crashed and then just not meaningful, right? It turns out that um, the reason why it crashed is because uh, this is a system which is unstable. Um, a ball bouncing is not unstable. You will, no matter how you launch the ball, it will always bounce in a fashion which is predictable. For a hopper, if you don't land your leg in the right direction, you're too fast, then you will, you're going to have this problem which is you're going to fall. So. Uh, let me continue that here. Uh, simulation fails, as we saw. So what happens, what's happening in the simulation is uh, if you come If you're coming too slow, then for a given theta that's fixed, you'll take off at a too steep angle and you'll not have enough momentum. All backward. <coughs> However, if your speed is too much, high speed you're going to fall forward so in other words for a given landing angle theta, there is an optimum speed. So you've got to launch this system at a certain speeds for it to keep bouncing around and not falling. Okay, so now what we do is turn the root finder 
on equals one and simulate and you'll see that it doesn't fail simulation shows what is known as a periodic motion or its motion that repeats itself We'll keep seeing that the hopper just bounces off it doesn't fall okay and uh, this is really a, a but itself is a research topic i would just keep it here and show you the simulation of so what i've tried to do is we had this failures uh, so essentially try to use a root finder root finder is the same thing we use to <coughs> in order to get the ball to hit the target we told it uh, the target x y values and the uh, and the projectile found the angle of launch and the velocity <coughs> in this case i use the same function f solve to find the launch speed of this um, hopper so the height from the ground the y height and the velocity such that after one step it'll be back to the same velocity and height <coughs> so let's run this you can see that it's periodic it doesn't fall and that's because i found the initial launch speed so that it will not fall down and then there is things called stability which i've put in here but i'm not expecting you to know it the root finder code is here. It basically uses f solve, the same function I used earlier. And then you don't have to worry about Jacobian, but there's a way in which you can compute that if the system is going to be stable or not. Turn that this system is not stable. So if you push it slightly, it's actually going to fall. But when it's as long as it's on that trajectory, which is periodic, it's not going to fall. Okay, so 